All right, so today we're gonna jump into the Metaverse portfolio. It's my top tier portfolio, and we're gonna dive in a little deeper. There are some new entries to it. I think you guys are gonna love this versus some of the ones we've done in the past. But it's getting ready for 2022, and I think this is gonna be a big year. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Let's get into it today. On the top tier Metaverse portfolio, the one thing that I've done with a lot of my portfolios, is, and I suggest this all the time, is that you should be looking at rebalancing, taking some of the losers out, getting rid of, even, even on some tokens where you've maybe lost money, if you're looking for some tax you know, loopholes or some potential tax harvesting, there's an opportunity for you to jettison those assets and move on and start to look at reallocating some of that dry powder, even though you may have lost you know, 10, 20%, 30%, maybe you've lost more than that. But the point is, is that there's still a certain amount of liquid asset in there that you could rebalance and or re-inject into other projects that are potentially going to hold out. Because listen, you can't win on every one. And that's one thing that I just remind everybody on is as you're looking at your portfolios. And remember, Metaverse is going to be a big project or a big topic for next year. The question will be, will we see continued major growth? Will we see a lot of action in whether it's the gaming community or in the NFT side of things, there's still a lot yet to be uncovered. And I just want you guys to remember, these are all cautionary videos in the sense that it's not investment advice. We do these things called meta our market movers and the concept behind a market mover is real simple. We throw in data, we'll put some of our own research in, we'll give you guys some analysis and then hopefully some research checklist for you guys to get out there and do your own. And of course, as I said, not investment advice. Let's jump over to the actual portfolio. And I would just want to, we st this one, of course, we've been building throughout the year. It's a fairly large uh, portfolio, but I want to get into the assets. Now, don't, don't get lost in these numbers. What I want you to think of, if you're doing this with $100, $1,000, $10,000, $100,000, dollars whatever it might be, this is how I put together the portfolio that I work on that's kind of my core for or my top tier for the metaverse and some of the projects that I've been in for quite some time. So this is in no particular order. I will call some of these out that I think are special to me that I think are not only good ones to watch next year within this top tier, but Gala of course has been just a big performer for me mainly because of the price point that I purchased it at. Uh, still in my hold list for uh, 2022 render token. Even though Render has had a massive run-up, and I still believe that it's probably going to, we'll most likely see a little bit of a downturn and then a resurgence as we see more projects start to adopt what Render is doing next year. I don't look for this one to really take off too much in the early part of the year, but I definitely think this is going to be one that uh, continues to grow. Again, because of my position on that one, you know, it, it just isn't one that I'm going to move out. Axie Infinity, of course, everybody knows I'm a big fan of Axie. What has made this more interesting to me this year with Axie is the staking aspect. And we've talked a little bit about staking Axie and I'm, I'm a little bit lazy sometimes with, with my portfolio. I should be staking all my Axie. And what I'm trying to do is, and we, we're probably going to end up doing a video on this, on just the process of getting and staking Axie and how to move it, things of that nature. But when you have the, uh, a portfolio that's like this that in, within the scenario of you've owned Axie for a while, the question would be, do you sell it? I don't think so. I think we're going to continue to see a little bit of a rise. We will see an adjustment on Axie and there will be a dip opportunity as well. And I would most likely be dollar cost averaging on Axie. So that will continue to stay in there. Polygon, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of Polygon. It's my number one token for uh, my holdings overall. And it will continue to be, I think, as Polygon, I, I think, may have a chance to run up. If we see a full bull run into seeing a, a six-digit Bitcoin, I think a Polygon's going to really benefit from that, probably in the tune of anywhere between 7 and $10, where it's trading right now at $278. Uh, and a big bag right now, Sandbox, of course, another big bag of mine. Again, because I purchased it at a certain time, in the cycle of if you and again this is another trick for you guys when you're paying attention to our channel when we start dropping videos on either it's new projects or we start doing research on a project and we start talking about it most likely is we are investing in that now i usually will tell you 
if, hey, you know, full disclosure, I'm invested in this project. That is typically when, if I were doing the research, I'd be jumping in because it means we've got fresh research, we've done our sentiment analysis, we've been able to assess that this is a good investment and we're going to go out on it. So that is one thing to be watching. If you go back and look at our videos of when we dropped all of these videos, go check the price point at that time had you invested in some of these projects. Some of the ones I'm going to drop to you today are good ones that you could invest in early, and mean when I say early, meaning now, and potentially start to really turn things around. Uh, Alluvium, of course, another one that is kind of a mid-run. I did not invest in Alluvium early. I invested kind of on its second dip, and there's some things around Alluvium. I won't jump over to that one, because, but I want you to look at that chart on Alluvium. Actually, let me just add a new chart real quick here so we can look at Alluvium real quick. Let's go to the one year. There were a couple of dips in here that you had an opportunity to grab Alluvium on this, obviously on this big run up right here where it hit that high at 1281. A lot of people were looking at that, including myself, saying over $1,000 is just crazy for Alluvium. And I was talking about this back in when Alluvium was five to $700 and I was thinking, okay, this is gonna be a 2X, maybe a 3X. And then of course, we know what happened. Alluvium popped right up here to its all time high at $1,800, it has settled back in, and this may be an opportunity of an entry point. Now, I will caution this, is that I am watching Alluvium very closely because I think there's going to be a dip. And when I say a dip, meaning we could see a resistance level, and I just wanna kinda ch show this chart. Resistance level, resistance level right here at around $1,000. As you can say, as see, it's trading at 1157 right now. We're gonna probably do an update on Alluvium in terms of sentiment, because this is something that we're very close on and we track our sentiment data and our amplification data on some of these projects. And the reason is, is because typically on special amplification, we get a little bit of a leading indicator on where a particular project is going. Maybe it's up or down, but that is usually telling us a little bit about something like this. And when I see a token like Alluvium, which is one that we'll watch, uh, when it's sliding like it is and has been over the past uh, few weeks, this may give me an opportunity to do dollar cost averaging. And that is something that you should be doing all the time anyway. If you're investing in crypto, you probably already know this. Uh, let's jump back over here to the portfolio. The other one, of course, that I've talked about in the past is uh, Decentraland Mana. Um, this is another one that I think had you been able to get in on Mana Early enough, this was a big win on where this is going. And trading at 390 right now, I still like this project to stay in my bag. And then I'm gonna talk about some new ones here that are recent investments for me and I've added them into my uh, portfolio. The first one I'm gonna jump into is Ecomi. And Ecomi, of course, if you are not aware of it, let's look at the chart right here. We'll go to the one year. Uh, or the year to date right here. So you can kind of see where it's been training up here in the high back in March. It had this massive fall off. I think a lot of people lost faith in what VV was trying to do. Um, and at that point, we also didn't see the big movement in the NFT space really picking up steam yet. And then here around the mid-year mark, around uh, September and remember uh, October, because October was a very big day in terms of the metaverse. But Ecomi, I think, is one of those that is uh, gonna continue to move, and I think it's in a good position for a purchase right now at 0 .006. If you look and see what VV's been doing with Immutable X and just everything overall as VV as a whole, this is a strategy. If you are into NFT collectibles, this is one that I'm very interested in. And I think as VB continues to put out partnerships and also deals with licensing, we're gonna to continue to see a lot more activity on this one. Trading in with, or having the capability of interfacing with Immutable X and we see that transitionary opportunity of actually doing commerce, meaning trading your gems, which is what you use over on VB. If you followed our VB videos, if not, if this is new to you, what I would recommend is make sure and search VB on our channel Go look at a couple of interviews we've done. We've done one with Kyle Wilson, which I think is one of the VB experts out there. We've also done an analysis of our own on VB. Watch those two videos, because they'll give you a lot more understanding about how VB is going 
to work in the metaverse, how it works in unison with Immutable X, what that means to collectible NFTs, and it's a big one. The other one I wanna jump over here for is, of course, um, Arweave. And Arweave is one that I've talked about, I feel like at nauseum on this show. Um, Arweave is an interesting project, and the reason Arweave is on my list, I wanna jump to their website real quick, Store data permanently. So, and I've talked about Arweave before. We've done again. We've done most of these videos or most of these projects. We've had uh, videos on this and dropped them some time ago. So make sure and check that out. But Arweave is basically the AWS, the cloud for the potential of storing data within the metaverse and the likelihood of Rails. And this is something that I talk about a lot. Rails run the internet, and when I say Rails, meaning the underlying um, ecosystem and technology that runs the internet, Web 2.0, is being built right now for Web 3. And Arweave is one of a few that are falling into this. The other one is Render Token. We talked about that, of, of just being able to render uh, visual assets in the future. We'll see that in movies. We'll see that in graphics of all kind. We'll obviously see it in the metaverse. But Arweave, being the data engine of the metaverse is going to be a huge opportunity very early. This is one you will have to set on. It does have the potential to move around a little bit. And let me show you the year to date on Arweave. You can kind of see its little movement here. It had a nice little pump right here in September. It fell off, uh, which was a great buying opportunity. It then rose again uh, in uh, October. Then it had its all time right, all time for the year right there in November. Uh, which was really a good spot. Then it just dove, which was another great opportunity to buy Arweave just here recently. And then right back up the chart, it went. In fact, I think I did buy a bag uh, of Arweave. I may, may have talked about that on the video uh, before. But these are very good ones that I think are going to be in my top tier for quite some time. Arweave is one of them. My neighbor, Alice. Let's get to, uh, to my neighbor, Alice. So it's trading at 1539. Again, we've talked about this very early. It is a project, it's one of the older projects out there that I've invested in, in the metaverse. I still think this is yet to really pop. It's yet to really kind of take it to the next level. Let me jump to the chart real quick on my neighbor, Alice. You can kind of see where this one has come. It had this really nice fly up in March. It's been underperforming. And these are the ones, when I see a lot of these red days like this in projects that I like, this is when I think there's blood in the water and it's also an opportunity for me to go in and start getting some discounts and, and grabbing into those. Once this project really gets going, and this is something that um, was mentioned to me today by just one of our researchers, and I would agree with him, whoever really figures out gameplay for the kids, and because I have a couple of kids, and, and when you look at what's out there, whether it's you know all the Xbox projects or if you look at what's happening in Nintendo, Whoever comes up with a product or a project that can really kind of tune into what the kids are doing, I think that has got a great potential in blockchain gaming in the future. Now, NFT acquisition, the other big thing about this is remember, NFT acquisition and the whole idea of NFT collectibles is going to be something that you may not recognize this, but our kids and especially Gen Z, that's probably the only way they're really going to interface with society in the future. Instead of buying physical things, they're going to be buying digital things, digital assets, and essentially building up a portfolio, which is going to be interesting to watch, especially in the play to earn category of games and all that good stuff. Now, I know you guys are probably going, well, get, Paul, where's all the games that are out there? Listen, this is the top tier, though I do have a handful of games that I would consider like this one in the top tier. Really uh, games, I, I, and we probably should do a video specifically for games because I feel like those are much, they're in, most of the time they're a little bit more risky and also you have to be in a different mind frame uh, as an investor to go into a gaming project. So it's just a little different look and feel, but we are definitely uh, gonna talk about a few. Immutable X, I just talked about that earlier uh, and why it's tied with Okomi and what that simply means out there again Another big project that I think uh, will be one of my long-term holds. Now, we are going to be adding to this portfolio 
throughout the year, I'm probably going to add another six to 10 tokens. And I'll talk to you guys every time that I decide to exit a position. If I exit a position, there's probably a reason for it, whether it's research, data, or we see a competitor or something else happening in the space that could cause a little bit of turbulence. That's usually, it doesn't mean it's a bad project, just means sometimes I might say, hey, it's a good time to take profit off the table. Let's go and do that. Um, Chili's is one that we've talked about here just here recently. And Chili's is, again, another project. And I just want to jump over to the Chili's chart. Uh, Chili's is another one. And when you look at where Chili's has been, it's had this nice spike when it first really kind of got its run up back in March, which is really the, the, the high time of Bitcoin before we saw the, uh, really the fall off in May. Had a nice, another, another nice little spike in April. And then, of course, it followed suit with most of the projects uh, that really rule out there. The reason that Chili's is so interesting to me is it had a little bit of this uh, summer solstice right here, I feel like. And then it had a nice little run up and then a dip again and a great opportunity for buying the dip, which I did. And this is one that I do like uh, only because of the fact that we will continue to see what uh, projects like this is going to do. Let me kind of talk about right here. Currency for option for blockchain products, services geared toward mainstream consumers. This is kind of this whole uh, elevation of sports. If you're into sports and entertainment, Chili's essentially is going to be the sports token. And I think that's the key here with Chili's is as they start to drop in and really, especially with socios and how it's tied together, all of this in the sporting side of things of the metaverse are going to get very interesting. I think there's going to be a handful of other projects that are coming up the pipeline right now. I still think they're a little risky to be falling in the top tier group. But there's a few other projects coming in the sporting arena for blockchain that could be unbelievably lucrative. So be on the lookout for those. And if you're doing some research, maybe you're into sporting, whoever cracks the code for, and Socios is close because of their connection to Chili's and, and just Socios the side of it, of cracking the code to the NFL, the NBA, also, all the major, when you look at what's happening in the soccer, which is where Socios has done a really good job on just sports entertainment. But tying that into uh, the whole aspect of fintech, and that is going to be huge. So that is kind of a, a rundown. Last on the list is Engine. And Engine is one of those projects that has just been around for a long time. And it is a metaverse play that I think will continue to perform. And if I look at the portfolio on just where it is on profit and loss, just so you guys can kind of see, obviously Gala, again, because of my position, uh, I'm, when I entered Render, I'm going to continue to hold. Axie is just, I, I just believe in what they're trying to do. Um, even though, even though with Axie, there is a couple of things you should be on the watch out for. And that is if we start to see any degradation in player count and we don't see continued growth, Watch what they're doing in staking, which I think is very important, and also liquidity, because liquidity on their ecosystem. And it is very tied to Ethereum right now, which I think slows that project down a little bit. But watch for potential bridges and other potential tech integration into Axie that could really change that up. And we'll see about where that's going. Don't get me off on, on Ethereum, because that's, that's a project I feel like is just and I've been a big f fan of Ethereum. I don't want to get off on a segue here, but is watch our video on it because it, it talks a little bit more about why Ethereum, I think, is slowing. And we really have a lot. There is a lot that has to happen for Ethereum. And why is that important in, in the metaverse? Because Ethereum essentially is the currency of most of the projects in the metaverse outside of Binance. If you look at where Binance Smart Chain is going, BNB, and what that opportunity is, but it's a different kind of metaverse. This is Ethereum most of the time is dealing with the top tier, usually high volume liquidity assets that are in the metaverse versus Binance is usually getting those emerging projects because of gas fees. A lot of these new developers are moving in that direction. So be on the watch for that. We are going to do a video on the Binance Smart Chain and why its potential for 2022 may be greater than Ethereum in terms of profitability, uh, also in terms of discoverability in new projects. Because remember, all of this depends on one thing, and that is developers as we start to see this. This is no different than what we saw in the mid-2000s with the internet 
It depended on developers to really kind of accelerate projects and accelerate what was happening on the internet. It's no different now in blockchain. Um, all right, so if you guys, of course, have any questions on this one, drop them in here. And I know there's a lot of assets that probably should be in this list. However, you can only do so much when you, you if you've got a fixed amount that you want to spend or uh, invest in something like that, you kind of have to draw in your guns. Now, I don't always try to say, hey, let's just stay with the ones that I feel really comfortable with. That's not typically how I'll do a top tier. What I'll do is, you know, 50, 60, maybe 70% is in the real comfortable projects that I do feel that are going to hold. And then I'll still go a little bit edgy on projects that I just believe because of their potential, they deserve that kind of level in top tier. And like I was referencing, the ones that I added into top tier uh, here recently was my, my neighbor Alice, because someone's gonna win the kids game aspect of uh, blockchain. Arweave, because I just think data is gonna be a killer. Ecomi, just because of digital collectibles, their tie into licensing. Uh, Chili's because I think they are going to be tied into where everything's going in sports and I think that's a big one. And then Immutable X just because of their relationship with what's happening over on Vivi. Even though Immutable X on its own is another project that just is stellar. So all these hopefully good uh, projects that you can look at as a top tier if you're a conservative you know, player in this space, there hopefully there's a few in here that you might look at and say, yeah, this might work for me. And there's also a few uh, in here that are a little bit edgier, so hopefully it kind of you know solves the taste of everybody out there that's looking at what should we do in 2022. We're going to get into some other videos around our 2022 portfolios in the metaverse, gaming, and a handful of other things, so make sure and stay tuned right here on the channel. Another thing to be watching out for if you're listening in over on the podcast, hey, listen, you got to get in here to the YouTube channel. This is where all of the charts come in. It's where we do a lot of our, obviously our interviews. And of course, it's also where we give you guys access to the Diamond Circle. And the Diamond Circle is the most special thing because not only does it drop information to you, it also gives you access to winning things. We did a big uh, win and giveaway here recently during the Christmas holidays. And we're gonna be continuing that as we uh, crack into 2022. So you wanna jump in on the Diamond Circle, hit the link below. If you have a question for me, just hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.